Welcome to Gail's Garden Herbs and More. There are so many things that I want to share with you about herbs. I mean, in all these homesteading videos here and there, people will tell you about their gardens and their homesteading, and they'll have an herb for this and an herb for that. But real, true herbalism is more than even that. It doesn't that you have to be an herbalist, but if you could learn some basics, um, it's really going to help because you don't take an herb for a, a problem like you take a pill. We've been raised to take a pill for everything, and it's not that way with herbs. It's just not. I'll tell you, herbs work the best when you learn how to combine certain herbs. Um, there's many herbalists that you can follow after and take classes from or read books from or maybe go to some of their plant walks. Um, I've just been listening to David Winston on another um, herbalist channel, and he's great. I really enjoyed listening to him. Probably one of my most favorites is K.P. Kalsa. He is so knowledgeable, that man. He's, I think he's an actual guru, but um, he's a great, he has so many, he's the head of so many things, and, and he does so many different things. Um, he's, I think, as far as herbs, he's mainly Ayurvedic. Now, you, there's different, um, well, there's probably a different viewpoint on herbs between every herbalist, but there is regular, I don't know what you'd call them. You have, like, Ayurvedic from, like, India, that area, and they have certain ways of use. they have some, a lot of favorite herbs and certain ways of doing certain things. Then you have traditional Chinese medicine, which is called TCM. And then you have Western herbalism, which is maybe like here in our country in the United States. With, uh, like Back in the 1800s to about 1930, we had the eclectics herbalist, um, and they did a lot of great things. I want to try to find some material and do some reading on some of the stuff that they did. There were individual herbalists like Catfish back, and I think he was in West Virginia. And, um, oh, I can't just, some of the names aren't, are, they're escaping me right now, but there's just different people that were famous for certain areas in certain states. Um, Bass, Bass, what was, Bass was the last name, I think. Where was he from, Tennessee or something? I'm not sure. But anyway, there were herbalists here and there that were well-known. A lot of people from their state, their county, their states went to them. Um, and they learned a lot of things just hand-on. Maybe it was handed down to them from a, an herbal granny somewhere in the hills or, or experimentation themselves or whatever. But I'd like to find some reading and read up on some of that. You can pick up things and just learning things and practicing on your, with in your own. I'll tell you something. My little um, disabled Chihuahua has not been well. He just skin and bones right now. It's hard to get him to eat, and um, th th he's got several problems. But I noticed a rectal bleeding, and that scares me. I don't know how long he's going to last, but. I thought, okay, if you get yarrow, you can put it inside, drink it inside. It'll stop bleeding on the outside, but it also will on the inside. Um, so I went and found some dried yarrow leaves that are a couple years old. I thought, well, maybe I can get a little bit out of them. And then I seen my jar self-heal and all my, my herbs. It was just, I don't know, it was almost like it was calling my name. So I, I don't have any self-heal up here. I hope I can find another plant and get another patch going. Um, you know, since I've moved, that's one thing I didn't bring with me. I don't have any plants here, but I had some dried, so I put some of that with some of my yarrow, and I made a tea, and I put just a little bit of sugar, because yarrow is really, really bitter. Um, self heal doesn't have a whole lot of flavor, but the yarrow is very bitter, and I put, so I put, and sugar's not really good for you, but I put a little bit of sugar so he wouldn't mind taking it. And I gave him some, and he was just kind of lethargic. And then later he came out, he went back under the bed, that's where he stays. And he came out and he was ready to eat some. So he ate a little bit, not a whole lot, but he ate some. And then um, later I got him out and I wrapped him in a towel, because he smells real bad too. He's just, I don't, that's not a good sign either. 
And um, I was cleaning his eyes and stuff, and I held him for a while. And then I gave him some more tea. And then after that, he was ready to eat um, a treat. So, you know, he just, <laughs> just in one day, and I know he's not cured, but at least it, it got his appetite going. And his eyes brightened up a little bit. And it's just thinking, once you start learning about your herbs and get them, get familiar with them, start using them. Start with one herb and then try to actually pick, start with one herb. And then as you get used to it, what it looks like, what it feels like, different ways to use it. Good herbs, there's some herbs that are good to just, you can take them anytime. They're not only medicinal, but they're food, like stinging nettle is wonderful. Um... That's Oh, I talk about that one quite a bit. But there's many others that are good for a lot of different things. But do you want to stick with your safer herbs and learn them and go from there? And then you can go out. Maybe you'll learn how to combine herbs. Um, licorice root is great combined with lots of different herbs because it helps a synergistic effect. Herbs seem to work better together often. And they... what. It's what's called synergistic. They work together and it may make it thousands of times more potent. Um, it just works a lot better. It's like with my Houtinia cridata. I always take that with um, licorice root. Um, which um, both of them have antiviral to them. And some herbs fight some types of viruses and maybe not another. Another herb might fight a different type of virus. Everybody just... People throw everything in the same boat. Um, elderberry is a good herb, but everybody says, okay, if you have a, a cold or a virus, just take elderberry. It, I found it doesn't work for everything. I really like my elderberry and elderberry leaves, but it really doesn't work on everything, and it's not one of the more potent antivirals. It is good, though. It is good, and it has helped me several times get over just a simple cold or something. So I'm not saying it's not good. I'm just saying you can't throw everything in the boat with one herb saying it's going to do that. And different people react differently. Some an herb may work better for than another person because everybody's body's a little different. See what works for you. See what works for your family, maybe your pets. Um, be very careful because there's some things pets can't have, uh, especially cats. <laughs> Um, I wouldn't, yeah, cats are, they're a whole different animal than a dog. But, um, yeah, and I've used herbs with my goats. Um, there's just so many ways you can use herbs. But it takes time, and it takes uh, to learn everything. But start, start. Now's the time to start. It's getting where things are getting harder and harder to get. You need to start learning your herbs. You may find them... Maybe we ain't going to have money to buy them because what money you have, you're going to need it for other things. I mean, the price of groceries is just outrageous or anything anymore to get your car fixed. I mean, it's just crazy. So learn, you know, I take a walk through the woods, right? This time of year is a bad time. There's not a whole lot out there right now. There's a few things, but... Um, I'm excited for upcoming spring and start taking walks and looking at the different plants coming up and see if I recognize any of them, if I can use them. I know there's St. John's wort here. I saw it last summer, but having just moving and everything, I didn't have time to just make a, a oil or anything. So I am hoping this year maybe to gather some and make an oil of my own. I had ordered some St. John's wort plant, but it was so dried and just dry. It wasn't very good wasn't very good quality and it didn't the oil should turn a red and it didn't um it didn't have any color the <laughs> the plant itself didn't have much color and that tells you something right there and you learn these little things but you'll learn quicker if you follow after different herbalists and yes i've paid money for some classes but i've also gotten some classes free like um herb mentors great and i had joined it for a long time, I, but I, I just can't afford to do that right now. But I still, they send me emails, and they had this class, another free class with KP Call. So I would have loved to bought the class because then I could pull it up whenever I wanted and review it. 
but I just don't have it now. But at least I got to take the class live, you know, you know, took it as they were giving it then. Um, you can do things like that. There's magazines. I don't see them so much anymore, though. I used to go to Tractor Supply, and they used to have different herb magazines. I haven't seen them in a little while. Um, and there's books. And Rosemary Gladstar, she's great. She's got several books out. Um, of course, I should have wrote, wrote a bunch down, but there's you just start looking. Herbalist, online herbalist. Just start looking and see what you find. You'll find some that are your favorites and some that you agree with more than others. Or you can compare what one says about things and what another. And you can always learn something different um, from all of them. And you never want to think you have it all. <laughs> There's so much to know anyway. And we should all be learning. And we can learn from one another. We can learn from experience. Anyway, I just really, really want to encourage you to start looking into your herbs I wanted to show you a couple things real quick. I didn't want to make this real long because it's mainly just talking. And I didn't want to bore you to death. You can get bags. Now, I have told some of y'all about this for the Hawthorne. But it's just tea bags. And <laughs> it's so powdered and so little in one little tea bag that you're really not going to get enough to help. I'm sorry, you're not. It does maybe a little bit. I put several tea bags in one cup. But really your tinctures are more medicinal. But I figure every little bit can help. And um, I get I bought some tinctures because I needed it really quick to get started. And then I started making you know, making my own. But it takes a long time. It takes several weeks released. I like to leave it in there for several weeks. The um, Hawthorne berries themselves, when they're dried, are hard as rocks and they're really hard to get anything out of, but it takes a while. You let them soften up and you just, and I try, I can't even grind them. Um, I have some Tulsi here and some tea bags, but it's still tea bags. Tea bags, you don't get really medicinal quality much out of at all. Maybe a little. Um, you want to get the real plant and learn to tincture and stuff. And I have many videos on different types of tinctures and things. But I don't know if you can all see this, but they're just, they're just little berries. Now, I just washed my hands before I started this, but they're just little hard berries. They grow, I have a bush out there in a pot. They grow in big hedgerows in, like, England. They use them because they're thorny. Boy, they are thorny, too. So instead of a fence, in a lot of places, they just grow along the fields and thick. And the cattle aren't going to go through all those thorns or people or whatever. You don't want <laughs> those thorns are vicious. But you can use the leaves and blossoms on your hawthorn, too. This is, I don't know what I called it a minute ago, but it's hawthorn. Or if I called it at all. Um, and then, besides herbs, it's a whole lifestyle. I mean, you know, I say this is Gail's garden, herbs, and more. And from your garden, you're going to grow things that are, they're going to be much healthier and better for you. Um... You want to eat healthy things like all kinds of citrus fruit. Uh, I've got little grapefruits in here. I've got lemons and I've got oranges and I've got mandarins. Um, these are great to snack on and they're healthy for you. You want to get out and do exercise and work. I did today. I drug stuff up and we had a little burn pile and was just trying to clear land and burn stuff and whew. I tell you, I did a little job, a little work today, um, but work's good for you, and I really enjoyed it because I was in the woods, and I love being in the woods and pulling stuff over, and it's fun to put stuff in a little fire. You can't, they don't allow you to get very big ones anymore, but, you know, we needed to burn all the old junky stuff that was around, the old pieces of broken wood that are broke off the trees and different things, and, um, we're saving some of it for wood stoves. I've got a wood stove. I just don't have it assembled. I probably won't even use it this winter. But I'd like to start getting my wood for it. And it's a very tiny, tiny, little, tiny wood stove. So I'll have to use real small wood. But, yeah, exercise is really good for you. Eating right. And then your herbs. There's so much involved. And then um, trying to keep stress down. And, um not worrying too much. I mean, it's 
just your health overall is you can't just take one herb and it be that so i just want to leave you with all these basic thoughts about herbs and herbalism and that you might share with with others to get them kind of pique their interest a little and keep going i'll be talking more about herbs i've already done many tinctures and salves and mouthwash and for my teeth my tooth powder and <laughs> I don't know, I've done so many. And then things about individual herbs. You can go to my channel. If you don't know how to get there, click on my little picture. My little picture has a flower in it. It should take you to my channel. And then across the top, it's got different things, little words that go horizontal across the page. Look for where it says videos. I think it's about the second one. And you click on the, that, and it'll take you to all my videos. And if you want to learn some things, you know, go through all those videos and maybe you'll pick up a few things. That's what I do learning from other herbalists' channels and stuff, too. So I'm not a bona fide licensed herbalist. I just, I've taken the cl classes and I have went on herb walks with her herbalists and I have read books and magazines and taken, I've got, Excuse me, I've got notebooks and notebooks and notebooks of notes. And anywhere I can get any information, because I love to study and research anyway. And I want to share with you. And I'm hoping you all can get some information from me. Um, I believe that God gave us the herbs for medicine. That's what his word says. Now, I don't get into it as far as witchcraft and all that. I don't do that kind of stuff. I just don't do that kind of stuff because I belong to the Lord Jesus. And, but he, I believe that God gave us that to help us. And we don't want to be so over-focused that we forget about the Lord and that He is the great healer, first of all. You go to Him. He's the one that truly gives healing. No, He gives us tools that we can use to get our health, to keep our health. And one of those is the herbs that he gave us and plants, um, the good food from the ground. And feed our animals well so they'll be healthy too. And, you know, there's just so much involved in all this. But don't forget the great healer, most of all, our Heavenly Father, through his Son, Jesus Christ. And... He heals not only the body, but most important of all, He can heal your soul. You can have a whole beautiful relationship with Him. Not religion, but relationship with Him. I'll leave you all with this. God bless, and we'll catch you all next time. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you would. <laughs> Bye now.